Well, something's happened just overnight and something that's happened last week as well. Uh, and that's uh, well, all to do with free speech, really. Uh, the government is uh, threatening a new law uh, to force universities to protect free speech on campus after the former Home Secretary Amber Rudd was no platform for at Oxford University last week. Now, Oxford University itself uh, then criticised the uh, group which decided to no platform her. This apparently because people said that she shouldn't have a platform to discuss anything at all related to, it turns out, International Women's Day because she'd been Home Secretary at the time of the Windrush uh, scandal. Quite bizarre times. And this also at a time when uh, Trevor Phillips, the former head of the Equalities Watchdog, has been accused of Islamophobia and suspended from the Labour Party for saying things which are undoubtedly, clearly, un absolutely undisputable facts. Well, let's talk to Toby Young. He's now the General Secretary of the Free Speech Union, set up deliberately to try and protect people from just these sorts of things. Good morning to you, Toby. Good morning, Julia. Um, we are in extraordinary times when someone like Amber Rudd, who's probably on the sort of the wettest side of, uh, of of the Tory party, can be accused of being, you know, a racist uh, and uh, and therefore someone who's far right and therefore beyond the pale and shouldn't be allowed uh, to speak at any event at Oxford University. And yet that is what happened last week. Yes, it is extraordinary. And it was the um, second episode of no platforming to occur at Oxford within five days. Um, it uh, happened just five days after Selina Todd, the Oxford professor of modern history, was no platformed at a conference at Exeter College to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the first conference at Oxford on women's liberation. Um, uh, but yet the no platforming of Amber Rudd, I mean, just to be absolutely clear why that is unacceptable, the issue isn't that societies, even societies trying to encourage women to go into politics, the issue isn't that they have an obligation to invite people like Amber Rudd to speak. They don't. They're perfectly within their rights not to invite anyone. Yeah. The difficulty is the problem arises when you invite someone to speak, you cannot then rescind their invitation at the behest of a group of protesters or activists who disapprove of that person's politics, which is what happened here and also what happened in the case of Selena Todd five days before. The reason you can't, the reason that's unacceptable is because that effectively gives protesters, activists, demonstrators the right of veto over anyone speaking whose political views they, they disapprove of. Yeah, I mean, and this is the key, isn't it? You don't, you don't have to invite people. You don't have to agree with people that you invite. You don't have to uh, let them just say whatever they want and you don't even debate them. The point is that, I mean, especially for universities, when I went to university, you, you were looking to hear alternative viewpoints to test your own views. If you think that someone is completely wrong about something, go along and debate them and prove them to be wrong with your arguments was what we did. Or if, you know, you can't get into the debate, by all means, get a placard, stand outside and protest their views. But that's very different from protesting their right or trying to stop their right, often with threats of violence, which is where it usually ends up, um, their right to actually speak at all. Yes, I mean, the, the organisation, the um, uh, UN Women Oxford UK Society, which was set <laughs> sounds up... Sounds ghastly, by the, the way. Just sounds like a hideous night the, out. <laughs> It was set up as part of the United Nations um, effort to uh, celebrate International Women's Day, which was yesterday. And it was one of a series of events leading up to International Women's Day uh, that the UN was promoting. Um, and uh, the actual organizers of this event, the officers of the society in question, encouraged people who uh, disapproved of Amber Rudd's politics, who thought she mishandled the Windrush uh, scandal, who wanted to uh, hold her partly responsible for the Windrush scandal, who disapproved of the policies of the government she was a member of. It encouraged all of those people to come to the event and confront her, challenge her, argue with her, debate with her. So it was a perfect opportunity for all those people that think, you know, she's the devil incarnate uh, to actually engage her in public debate. Uh, but instead, they just decided, no, they just didn't want her to appear that that would be legitimising her views. Much better 
to stop her speaking and just stop those views, any views they disapprove of being expressed entirely, rather than take the opportunity to actually engage in debate. Now, a lot... In, win over some converts. But this is it again. Is this, is this is a very new development in the last, say, 10 years, or even less than that, that this, this has been happening. And, and, and it's a very new idea in terms of preventing people saying things which... It's almost like we could be infected by their views if they say something that we disagree with. I've always been a view, even when you're dealing with, say, Nick Griffin on BM, from the BMP going on Question Time, massive big rows about that on the time. His performance on Question Time all those years ago basically killed, absolutely killed support for the BMP because he was totally exposed as the idiot racist that he is. The point is that if you genuinely think that what someone says or believes is is untrue, is wrong and moral or whatever, you should be able to prove that with your words, with the proof you provide and your arguments. And now the idea it seems to be, and, and I thought it was just young people, but we often see this is happening with a lot of older people as well now. I don't know, it seems to be infecting people, this idea that, that to somehow hear a viewpoint that you don't like is in some way something of which you can take offence. It is, it is an outrageous infringement on your civil liberties to have to hear a viewpoint you don't agree with. Um, I find that... I mean, it's laughable, but it's also really sinister in a free democracy, isn't it? It is very sinister. Um, and I think the development uh, uh, overnight, the revelation, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that Trevor Phillips yeah. uh, is under, has been suspended and is under investigation by the Labour Party for Islamophobia. Now, you know, you couldn't have someone who is further from being an Islamophobe. He's a lifelong anti-racism campaigner. He's the former chair of the Equality and Human Rights Commission. Um, he's currently the chair of Index on Censorship. I mean, you know, no one could have better bona fides when it comes to their credentials as an opponent of racism, prejudice, and discrimination. He was one of the architects of the Equality Act. Uh, the Labour Party have decided to weaponize Islamophobia and smear Trevor Phillips as someone who's beyond the pale, someone who is prejudiced uh, and a racist, because after all, the Labour Party believes that Islamophobia is rooted in racism, which of course it isn't, because Muslims aren't a race. Um, but nonetheless, um, uh, it, it, rather than engage Trevor Phillips with debate, he was one of several prominent Labour Party members to criticise Jeremy Corbyn and to call him out for uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, rather than engage in the internal debate the Labour Party needs to have, instead it's decided to smear him as an Islamophobe to cast him out, cast him as beyond the pale. And that, I'm afraid, that would be the attitude of the Labour Party in government to any of its uh, uh, opponents. Instead of, instead of encouraging free speech and open debate, uh, they would try and smear and expel and shut down their critics in this kind of underhand, cynical, yeah. but actually ultimately quite sinister way. I mean, and do, do you support, just in a word, because we, we do have to move on to the topic, do you support the idea if the if, if universities are not, I mean, Oxford University, so they're going to look into this with Amber Rudd, but if if uh, it, does, there's, it does appear the universities' administrations have been part of the problem with this, allowing students' unions and the like to get away with it, do you think that we do need to have a government, you know, bringing in a law to force universities to uh, pr protect and promote free speech on campus? Well, the, the, the problem, Julia, is not that there aren't laws um, uh, uh, imposing legal duties on universities to uphold free speech. There are several laws, and there's the um, European Convention on Human Rights, too. The problem is that they're not enforced, yeah. that universities don't observe them. What's needed is a body that can hold universities' feet to the fire and make sure they observe their own policies on free speech and ultimately comply with the law. That's a role I hope the Free Speech Union can play. Okay. And incidentally, we'll be campaigning uh, uh, on behalf of Trevor Phillips's rights to free speech too. I'm about to launch a petition. Toby Young, I'll be signing that petition. Toby Young, General Secretary of the Free Speech Union, really appreciate you joining us.